Just another game is how Jets coach Richard Money has described his squad's impending encounter with A-League glamour side Sydney FC. Sunday's match will see the return to Energy Australia Stadium of two former Newcastle United players, while the appearance of one particular striker is expected to draw a crowd. Two former Newcastle players responsible for two round two goals. That's two very good reasons for the Jets to be at their absolute best this weekend. Robbie Middleby and Matthew Bingley seem to be settling well into the Sydney FC scene. Middleby in particular quick to pick up the club's superior attitude. Definitely everyone lives to play against us and I think uh, a lot of Newcastle boys were touted to come to Sydney and um, I think they'll be up for the game. Bingley's not so confident and can see the potential in the new look Newcastle side. Uh, I've watched them a few times and um, with the, the calibre that they've got in their squad you're expecting a lot more from them and whether or not it's going to happen this week I don't know but uh, we'll, be, we'll be looking at a pretty tough game so uh, you know we'll have to be on our toes. Jets coach Richard Money will be doing all he can to make sure it does, with the bonus of an almost fully fit side at his fingertips. The only cloud is hanging over striker Ante Milicic. He's improving day by day and um, it's going to be right to the wire as to whether he plays or not. Um, but the good news is that he thinks he has a chance. Sydney striker Dwight York is on his way back from World Cup commitments in Costa Rica and is expected to play in the game on Sunday. It'll be a reunion of sorts for him and Richard Money, who spent time together back at Premier League club Aston Villa. So it'll be good to see him and nice to shake his hand and give him a kick, and kick or two in the shins at the same time. <laughs> The Newcastle Jets and Sydney FC continue to endure mixed preparations ahead of their eagerly awaited A-League football clash on Sunday. Sydney FC's star recruit Dwight York is expected back from national duty in time, but it's unclear if he'll start on Sunday. Jet striker Ante Milicic, meanwhile, is struggling with a hamstring strain. So I definitely want to be part of it, but... You know, I've got to be sensible at the same time, which is difficult for sportsmen at, at times like this. This is a big game and obviously we want three points from it, but, you know, it's still only the third game of the season yeah. and I certainly don't want to miss him for the next five or six games, that's for sure. Australia Stadium here in Newcastle as we arrive at Game 4, Round 3, Hyundai A-League. 14,000 tickets pre-sold and the fans are building up nicely for Newcastle Jets at home to the Sydney FC. And there's a nice shot of the ground. Conditions are, go are good. The track is pretty good as well. There's a slight breeze and we are looking forward to a great tussle here between the Jets and the glamour side Sydney FC. Well, it is the final game in round three of the Hyundai A-League, but plenty of news in football around the world. Most importantly, in Marrakesh, Morocco, where we got a great decision uh, from FIFA, as far as the Socceroos are concerned, to play the away leg first in November. And one man who's pretty happy about that is the national assistant coach, Graham Arnold, who joins me first. Graham, welcome aboard. You must have a smile on your face because the right marble has come out. And you talk about the travelling, the preparation, the site, what does it do for the Socceroos? Well, finally the marbles have fallen our way, haven't they? And a uh, huge result for, for the team, I think mentally, for the players. All the players expressed how they wanted to play the second game here in Australia in front of 85,000 people. They expressed their concerns with the, with the travelling overseas, so therefore it's a huge result. And does it allow to, to really boss South America? I mean, if we can stay in the away contest first and put them under pressure, that all of a sudden that psychological battle could really turn in our favour? Well, obviously, we have to go to South America and, and we've got to go down there and batten down the hatches, so-called, and, and really make it difficult for the South Americans, get them back here in front of 85,000 people, show our flair players, get them to do what we want them to do and be barracked home all the way to the World Cup, okay. I hope. OK, well, that is for another day. But uh, today, of course, it's about the Hyundai A-League. Three games down already in round three. Let's have a look how it goes. Adelaide United, what a story this was with ten men. They beat the victory one goal to nil. What an upset here. The Central Coast Mariners beaten at home by the Knights two goals to nil. And Perth Glory did it nicely. Two one winners over the Queensland Raw. 
and on the ladder looks this way Adelaide United two wins and a draw up to seven points Sydney still to come of course on four with the Raw, the Glory and the Mariners still on four New Zealand Knights up and running three points with that win Melbourne Victory still with two draws and a loss on two and the Newcastle Jets who are coming up shortly of course on a point so the Jets really need to get going here today it should be a, a fascinating match uh, they are under pressure, of course, Richard Money's team, and we, we will see a little bit more, find out a little bit more about the Jets after this break. players there for the Jets, Nick Carl providing it for Ante Milicic against the Mariners, Graham Arnold. He says he's going to win the golden boot, Ante Milicic, he'd better get going because Bobby d has got three over there in the west, but he'll get another big test. He's making his way back from injury, but against his Sydney FC defence, another big test today. Well, it's got, a lot's going to fall on his shoulders, Neil, because he's the experienced guy in the New, Newcastle Jets side that's going to lead the front line. In the past, he's had a couple of youngsters next to him. He has struggled with injury in the pre-season. He's finally getting back to full fitness, and we expect a lot out of him. We also expect a lot, of course, out of the skipper, Ned Zelich, a big signing for the Jets. And as we're about to find out, he had plenty of very inviting reasons to come to Newcastle. A beautiful view that heightened the beautiful game. The glistening waters of Newcastle were largely responsible for the homecoming of one of the country's greatest players. Absent from these shores for over 12 years, Ned Zelich has returned to invigorate the image of Australian football. I did my time overseas and, and had success uh, at certain clubs and played on the big stage as well. But I'm just excited about being back and, and, and to play for Newcastle and, and hopefully we can have a lot of success in the league. Capped 33 times for his country and decorated with accolades that include a UEFA Cup final appearance with Germany's Borussia Dortmund, Zelic was an easy choice for the Jets. We wanted someone that um, was a soccer roo. We wanted someone that wanted to come back to the country and play. We wanted someone that the, that the players and the fans could relate to. Um, we wanted someone that the players could look up to. And um, I think he fits that bill perfectly. With 13 signings aged 25 or under, the young Newcastle squad are keen to reap their skipper's experience. He's been there, he's done that, he's, uh, he's technically very sound and uh, I mean he'll marshal us around very well. It's, uh, I'm very happy to have him in front of me, I mean uh, it makes my job a lot, lot easier. I've obviously got a lot to learn and um, even I'm getting on a bit myself but um, yeah I mean you, you're always learning, if you stop learning then you, you might as well give it away and I think the opportunity to play with someone like him for myself is, um, is, is great. Closely eyeing his immediate future, Zelich is confident the Hyundai A-League will drastically improve the depth and image of the Australian game. I just think with the way they've structured it, with uh, one city, one team, um, I think that really is a formula for success. I think that all the people are going to get behind behind their team in each city. There's a lot of media interest and, and people are really excited and curious uh, about uh, how the league's going to go. The launch of the Hyundai A-League is designed to rejuvenate the image of Australian football. But Ned Zelich has a message to those younger players who dream of forging a career in Europe. Too many young players go over at, at, at a young age. There's always the danger of, of them being overseas and just making up the numbers and eventually maybe coming home. So I think it's, it, it's vitally important for players to, to, to do their time here in Australia. Presiding over one of the A-League's most inexperienced squads hasn't deterred Zelich from his short-term goal. Our aim has to be to get that first spot. Uh, we've got players with potential, uh, and I just think that uh, if every player can play to his potential, then, then we've got a really good chance of reaching our goals. Aside from steering the Jets to domestic acclaim, Zelich is fueled with a desire to make the Socceroos an international footballing force. I definitely know that, that uh, as, as a football player, I do have something to offer. Uh, I mean, that's me speaking, but. 
obviously uh, the decision makers uh, have their own thoughts. You know, he can bring to the national team the same things that he's going to bring to our team. That little bit of calmness and assuredness on the ball. Um, he reads the game really well and uh, I think he'd be an asset for the national team. With such a robust character standing tall in Australian football, the A-League will surely be riding the crest of a wave. All looks very nice there, but uh, the national team, I think that might be a little way off, uh, Graham Arnold. Uh, more importantly, the Jets, he's the man at the back in defence. Really, his first up assignment is to try and get this side going forward. Absolutely, and I think Ned Marshall's a defence. Well, Newcastle defensively have been very solid. I'd like to see uh, Ned venture a little bit more in the midfield, like he used to in the olden days, create the, the extra man in midfield and start their play. Thing is, he hasn't got time on his side, really, because he, he may have been a bit surprised with the pace and the tempo of this league. People expect big things of Ned Zellich, so it's not like he can take his time. No, of course not, but, you know, Ned's an experienced player. He's had a wonderful career overseas, and it's great to see a player of his stature come back and want to give something back to the A-League. Do you like him at the back? I do. I think it's much better for Newcastle that he does play at the back and give cover to the two stoppers. I think he plays better in that role than in the midfield role, sitting in front of the back four. Might also help that man, Nicky Carl, of course. Uh, Zilic uh, loves to see the pitch in front of him. He can fire off balls and, and uh, great accuracy. Gets it into feet from distance. Well, one of the major points there, Neil, is that he needs guys off the ball to make the runs. And if he doesn't have that, you can have the best passing game in the world but you still need the guys off the ball to make the run to get him behind. No question the big assignment is mixing the experience with the youth, youth here at Newcastle. I'm not sure they've, they've done that yet, but that, that really is the big assignment. Absolutely. And look, Richard Money's come in. It hasn't been an easier job for him to come straight into the fold. You know, he's got players here that he, he didn't know too much about. He's changed the system. They started with a 4-4-2. Mm. Now they've gone to a 3-5-2 to put Ned Zelich more at the back. But I'd like to see more out of Jade North and the wider, guy, uh, wider players, Corbo trying to get a little bit for further forward to give some good service to Anto Milicic. OK, well, let's find out more now from the Jets boss, Richard Money. Well, Richard, uh, you've changed the system last week uh, to a back through with Ned Zelich at the back. Will you stick with that today? Yeah, we'll start with that. Um, Craig Deans has uh, unfortunately uh, got a bit of a problem with his shin, but um, Paul Kohler will come in and fill that um, slot, no problem. Um, Haliti plays instead of Bridge up the front with Milicic. Um, other than that, the rest will be pretty much the same. Up front, Ante Milicic struggled with injury through pre-season. Is he back nearly to full fitness now? Well, I think he's getting now. I mean, last week's little problem with his hamstring didn't help anybody too much because it means we've had to nurse him through this week. But he's trained quite hard the last two days and he's pretty confident that he's OK. Um, and obviously, I think he's important for us to be on the team sheet, so he'll start. Playing against Sydney today, the Glamour Club. Do, is there extra pressure on the players here at home and yourself? No, I don't think so. To be honest with you, we need a win and uh, that, that wouldn't matter who we played today. You know, we, we started very slowly against Adelaide here, um, put up a much better show last week against Central Coast, and we want to build on that today. And um, yeah, the fact that it's Sydney, it's, that's the way the, the draw's gone. Um, but we need three points, and that's, that's the main thing on our minds. OK, Richard, thanks a lot. All the best today. OK, cheers. Thanks. The thoughts of uh, Richard Money, the Jets coach there. Graham, some changes here, of course. Uh, Craig Deans goes out of the side and Paul Kohler back in. But, uh, and also good to see Labano Haliti. He was good in pre-season. He takes over from Mark Bridge, who struggled a bit with fitness. Yeah, absolutely. Mark Bridge had a, a horrific injury in the off-season, and he's, he's lacked a lot of pre-season fitness, along with Milicic. And as it shows, they've only scored one goal so far in the first two games. They need to try and get more men forward. Matthew Thompson and Richard Johnson are more holding players. I'd like to see Nicky Carl get much more on the ball because he's a creative player that they need to expose. It's known as the cradle of the game here in Australia, but the Newcastle Jets are still waiting to deliver the goods after the first two rounds of the Hyundai A-League. It's Newcastle versus Sydney FC. We're at the Energy Australia Stadium, and the Jets are aiming to climb off the bottom of the table with a win against their glamorous rivals. So some fans in from the Newcastle side of the fence, but Graham Arnold, the big news from the Sydney FC dressing room, Dwight York on the bench. Absolutely, Mike, and I think it's a good decision by Pierre Labarski after 30 hours on the flight, coming back from Trinidad and Tobago after he, on international duty there where they lost 2-0. Seems a reasonable decision by Labarski. Probably frustrating for Dwight York, but I'm sure we'll see him at some stage during the game. One thing that the Pierre Labarski has built inside that Sydney FC dressing room, of course, is team spirit. Dwight York a little bit disappointed, as any professional would be. A big call by his coach, but I'm sure he will accept it with, uh, with great professionalism. Uh, the Newcastle players also very relaxed, going into an important game from their point of view. At the bottom of the table as we speak, the Jets 
and one player that the uh, Newcastle side are hoping will fire up this afternoon. It's been a slow start for him. Ante Milicic, the former soccer striker, we caught up with him before the match. Yeah, um, obviously, you know, everyone's been looking forward to this game, Sydney FC, but the main thing is we had a very ordinary performance first game of the season here, so we owe something to our home fans, so we're looking for a you know, much improved display this time around. How do you describe your start of the season? Personally or the team? Personally. Uh, missed a lot of pre-season, missed um, every single friendly game that we've had, but um, just happy to be involved and um, hopefully I can get better and better with um, weeks to go and, and remain you know, sort of injury free. Well, that's how Milicic leads to Newcastle just out, or at least he, uh, he comes out with the team, which was uh, some, in some doubt before the match. He had to go through the warm-up to make sure. And uh, Ante Milicic, so important to this Jets lineup, a player who has a fantastic scoring record over the years, looking for his 100th goal in club football in Australia this afternoon on the big stage here at the Energy Australia Stadium. It's a magnificent afternoon in the Hunter Valley. The inclement weather of earlier has disappeared. It's a bright, sunny afternoon, a cooling breeze as well as Mark Root and the Sydney FC skipper leads his team along the line, the shaking of the hand. And let's check on those lineups. And it's Newcastle Jets first, and a change made at the sharp end by coach Richard Money. Lebano Haliti will partner Milicic in attack. Mark Bridge drops to the bench. Paul Kohler also comes into a three-man back line in place of the injured Craig Dean in the centre. Matthew Thompson, Richard Johnson and Nick Carl and out wide Jade North on his more familiar side. On the side he prefers the right-hand side of the park for the Jets. For Sydney FC, as we mentioned, the big news, no Dwight York in the starting lineup. David Srilich and Sasho Petrovsky will partner each other in attack. The four-man midfield, Middleby comes onto the right side. Corica, McFlynn and Talek. And Alvin Checkley on the left side of the bench on the defence, I should say, Matthew Bingley as a right fullback. So wonderful conditions for football here at the Energy Australia Stadium. The crowd's still building up. Sydney FC unbeaten so far. Newcastle looking for their first game on the bench for the Jets. Eagleton, Musilic, Bridge and the reserve goalkeeper, Andy Pedersen. While for Sydney FC, the big name, the number 19, Dwight York. We'll sit out the start of the match. On the bench also Andrew Packer, David Carney and Justin Patfield. We're talking about big players, big games. Ned Zalich has been through it all. He will skip at the Jets this afternoon. A good test as well for Zalich up against the experienced Sydney FC strike force of Zrilich and Petrovsky. David Zrilich asked to do it alone last week in New Zealand. And I'm sure he'll relish the support he will get this afternoon from the Socceroo, Stasho Petrovsky. The referee is Matthew Breeze on a breezy afternoon here in Newcastle. We're all set for the kickoff. And Newcastle Jets, a big occasion, Graham Arnold. Absolutely, Mike. I think that Newcastle, they have to get off to a good start here today. They need the three points. On paper, they are a very strong side that we expect more from. Early ball in behind that Newcastle defence. An early touch for Reddy in goals. And then a tussle there off the ball between Haliti and Checkley. Checkley gets the decision. Well, Pierre Litbarski did experiment on the opening day of the season with his formation. Now 4 4 2. That looks to be his preferred setup. That's right, Mike. I think with Matthew Bingley out here on the right hand side at right back, he's been able to push Andrew Packer onto the bench with Robbie Middleby coming out there on the right-hand side to try and add some pace. The Newcastle have done a bit of a surprise here, Mike. Jade North has gone to right-back. They're playing a flat-back ball with Paul Kohler pushed into the middle of the park. Well, the referee has to hold up the match, and the sprinklers, believe it or not, have gone off behind the goal of Clint Bolton. A rather anxious glance from Matthew Breeze towards the grandstand, alerting the ground staff to the problem. Well, they've spent hours getting ready for the kickoff here, and is that what they were looking for? Well, Pierre Lebarski can't say now that he hasn't seen everything in football. Should have kept the game going anyway, Michael. The ball was down the other end of the field. 
So an unwanted shower for Clint Bolton, the Sydney FC goalkeeper. And it looks as though we're now able to resume. An ironic cheer from the crowd. There will be a drop ball on the halfway line. Richard Johnson wins out. Corbo, the Uruguayan, for ball forward from Mateo Corbo, who was the last player to arrive for the Newcastle Jets, the Uruguayan, who has had experience of English football in the lower leagues. Haliti. is a right fullback for Sydney FC. Such a versatile player, Matthew Bingley. He has played in every position on the field during his long career, including, yes, including as a goalkeeper. It has sometimes counted against him in terms of selection for national teams and the like, but uh, a player that every coach would like to have in his dressing room. That's right, Mike. Matthew Bingley, a very versatile player with a lot of experience played centre back, played right wing back, played midfield as a youngster, played as a striker so he knows how to fill every position on the field. Gruden as well to get out of trouble and the pass from McClin was overhit. Newcastle pushing on to try and pressure Sydney FC inside their own half. Milicic with his first touch. Zelich working in tight areas but does well to get the ball up the line and that will be a throw to Newcastle for Cole up in uh, his favourite position as a central defender another player who has played in different areas of the park Zalic with the header. North keeps it in. The chase is on for Aliti. And it was Rudin to the rescue for Sydney FC. The first corner of the game goes to the Newcastle Jets. So it's Carl with the corner for Newcastle. Whipped in towards the near post, cleared by Bingley. And a shot from Jade North was blocked by Sydney FC, still with Newcastle. Promising start to the game, this for the home team. Time and space now for Milicic, who's drifted wide. Has Zelic in support. Milicic working the 1-2 with Carl. Milicic has breached the wall and Newcastle are in front. and wonders how it all went so horribly wrong. What a great start for Newcastle, Jess and Ante Milicic. Here he plays a 1-2 there with Ned Zellich. Plays a nice little ball in there to Nicky Carla, 1-2. And a beautiful little dink over Clint Bolton's head. Milicic and Carl, a productive combination already for the Jets. And that is a cool, cool finish from one of the coolest customers in the game. The 100th goal that Ante Milicic has scored in club football in Australia. And a precious one at that. Superb start for Newcastle. Superb start for Milicic. And now a test of character for Sydney FC. Away from home in front of this parochial Newcastle crowd. between Corbold and Middleby. The Uruguayan protest. But there will be no changing the mind of the referee, Matthew Breeze. And Middleby continues the debate. See what Middleby's complaining there. If you see this off the ball, a slight little elbow there from Corbo. 
gets away with it. But a great start for Newcastle Jets. They've really laid the platform here. Sydney FC is going to see now a test of character to see what they can come back with. Well, Matthew Breeze had a good look at that melee, which developed after the free kick was given. He's called out Robbie Middleby. The Sydney FC captain Mark Rudin is also there. Goffey, but just making sure his defence does not lose its concentration. Well, things are being sorted out. Sydney FC looking for a quick response to that early goal from Milicic. the defensive wall picking it was and that will be a corner to Sydney FC a lot of emotion going into this game for both teams Newcastle desperate for their first win of the season particularly given they're at home against the benchmark club of the Hyundai A-League Talay puts it towards the near post important header from Cola. Bolton. Checkley had stayed forward. Willis tries to nod it on towards Petrovsky and Reddy takes no chances. Carl twists away from Middleby. It's McFlynn, in fact, who goes into the book for kicking the ball away. Just a few signs of frustration from the Sydney players. Probably immediately tangling with Nicky Carl. Decision. That's the reason for the free kick. Carl. Good delivery from Nicky Carl. The header was an important one from Fife. And Mateo Corbo. Carl again. The same trick. This time it pays off. Milicic in space. Where's the support? Five across in cover. Chance for Johnson! Richie Johnson! Fantastic start from Newcastle. Sydney are all at sea. Absolutely brilliant. What teamwork there. Beautiful ball by Nicky Carl. He's tried that probably 30 seconds before. Ante Milicic just got caught offside and he's done it again. Richie Johnson, the goal from long range, and this is one of his better ones. Beautiful ball there from Nicky Carlente, Milicic making a wide run, holding the ball up, and a great strike there by Ricky Johnson. Had to keep his head over the ball, the number seven from Newcastle. Intelligent ball from Milicic, and the outside of the boot from Johnson. Bolton saw it too late. And what a scoreline we have here at the Energy Australia Stadium. It's Newcastle 2 leading Sydney nil. And we're less than 20 minutes into the match. A huge challenge now for Sydney FC.
to boot up high from Sydney. Really have to give full credit here to Richard Money, the coach of Newcastle. They set his stall out. They're pressuring Sydney everywhere. As soon as Sydney get the ball at the back, they're stopping their build-up. Richard Money's done an unbelievably good job here in getting the structure and the system right. Petrovsky goes down. No reaction from the referee. Haliti now. He has plenty of speed. This way, Alavano Haliti. Milicic has to stretch. Outmuscled and outnumbered. And Milicic and Rudin contest possession. Well, they are great mates, don't they, Milicic and Mark Rudin. But this week, they haven't been speaking to each other. The phone has not rung. Milicic and Rudin, long-time teammates, speak to each other every couple of days during the course of the season, but not this week. And I don't think they'll be talking this week either if the score line, score line stays the same. Football is the name of the game. And Sydney have to catch up quickly. He's already picked the ball out of his net twice this afternoon. As I've already said, not a position he's become accustomed to since taking over at Sydney SC. Well, he has had the golden touch so far, but this afternoon it's been anything but. The golden touch has come from the team in gold, the Newcastle Jets. Milicic needs support. North. Goes for the early ball in. Gabe North, free header for Bingley. And well read by Richie Johnson. It'll be has it back. with Drillich. Didn't seem to be a lot in that, but the referee has found a free kick. Tore order this afternoon for Alan Picken, who just a few months ago was playing State League football with Sydney United. Reddy comes off his line. Makes the call left for him by Zalic. And an easy take for the goalkeeper in the end. job of breaking things up as far as Newcastle are concerned. He's done a great job as well alongside with there Richard Johnson really closing everything down but Sydney the frustration already of their shape in midfield. Corrick is now trying to move out onto the left hand side. Talley's come more central trying to get things going. Rudin's done well to keep the ball in play. Middleby works in tight areas gets it down the line and Zalic they're just in front of David Zrilic, two players who uh, have played against each other in the Bundesliga in Germany. David Zrilic and Ned Zelic. A Munich derby, I think it was, between Unter Haking and 1860 Munich. It was a long time ago now for both the players. remaining in the first half and what a scoreline we have not just the scoreline but you have to say the dominance of Newcastle as well Haliti with a cutback left by Thompson and another late run from Richie Johnson almost pays off for Newcastle another wonderful great run there by Haliti beautiful cutback there Great dummy for Matthew Thompson and Richard Johnson. Just got there a bit too late. And it was Steve Corica who was there in the nick of time for Sydney FC. Right, York. Oh, just 
today from Central America where he was on World Cup duty as captain of Trinidad and Tobago. They lost 2-0 to Costa Rica, but they do remain in the hunt for a World Cup spot, Trinidad and Tobago. Obviously, all the travelling is not helping Dwight York. That's the reason he's been left on the bench by Pierre Litparski this afternoon. Portable tangles with Middleby. That has been a feature of the afternoon. gets it back, chase for the cross, heads towards the byline, and great defending there from Alvin Checkley, who continues on a run, and is brought down by North, and across comes referee Matthew Breeze, to flourish the yellow card. He's in a great tussle there on the left-hand side with Jade York. And Alvin Checkley. Checkley won out there with Jade North chasing back. Lunging tackle. I don't think he wants to let the older statesman get an ink over him, Mike. McFlynn. Checkley doesn't have a lot on. Has to go towards the channel. Drillich. We thought was going to start as an old-fashioned libero but he is pushing on his man as we've seen it more than once with David Drillich proving that he's not afraid to go for the contest Ned Drillich in the air and on the ground Petrovsky still Petrovsky towards the near post and Newcastle had the numbers Thompson which is on, and Milicic has been kicked out. And Matteo Corbo goes into the notebook, and the foot was raised from the Uruguayan. Robbie Middleby on the receiving end, not for the first time in this match. Here we have another nice battle between Middleby and Corbo. High foot there from Corbo. And Robbie Middleby probably lucky to get away with not getting a few stitches there. Gruden drives it forward. Drillich is the target. One in the air by Picken. Good communication from Liam Reddy. That is part of the skill of goalkeeping, of course, to let your defenders know where you are. Just on five minutes remaining in the first half. And Sydney FC are really doing it tough against a pumped-up Newcastle Jets team. Team which has got its reward through two early goals. From Ante Milicic and Richie Johnson. Bingley. Carl. Oh. Find Taliki. Great run from Milicic. What awareness from Ante Milicic. He'll run it down. Two in the middle for Newcastle. One's gone to ground. That was Matthew Thompson as Aliki. Well, the shot was on target. Bolton was right on his line. Another sweeping counter-attack from Newcastle. Ante Milicic is causing all sorts of problems with those arc runs out in behind the fullback. Aliti coming in through the middle. Richard Johnson causing all sorts of trouble making the late runs. Some room now for Checkley. Corbo 
clears. The chase is on for Haliti. Well, it's a strange time to go to the bench, but Pierre Lipaski will make his first change of the match. And it's an early mark for Matthew Bingley. And Andy Packer has come on for Sydney FC just a few minutes before half time. Interesting to know if Matthew Bingley was injured because he seemed like he was moving okay. If it's a tactical change, you would have thought it'd be more of a positive change with Dwight York or David Carney coming on. Well, I dare say Pierre Lebarski will ring the changes during the break. And Dwight York, in fact, has gone to warm up behind one of the goals. Packer with the long throw in the meantime. Sydney desperately looking for a goal before half time to breathe some life into this contest. to Dwight York and it's a big man I guess in the coaching terms you're going to admit a mistake Graham Arnold and Lebowski gambled with something this afternoon and at the moment he's prepared to say it's not working well admit your mistake is one thing but fixing it's another thing because for me at the moment Newcastle Jets are just outnumbering Sydney in midfield they've got that extra player in there whether it's Nicky Carl, Johnson or Kohler or Thompson up against the Sydney midfield they're making the extra number and they're picking Sydney off at will Thompson. Here's Carl. He's been the creator for Newcastle with touches like that and that. And Haliti has played into an offside position to waste the good lead-up work from Nick Carl. Wonderful skill there from Nicky Carl. You see, does Robbie Middle be there with a little trick in behind his standing foot? And again, Probably just does it, overdoes it a little bit here, trying to find Haliti where he could have rolled the ball square into Matty Thompson. Well, as we've discussed, Richard Money now putting the players into positions which they like, positions which you would argue they play their best football. Nicky Carl is one of them, playing in behind the front two, creating things where his skills can do their most damage. again in close proximity a wrestling match and Alan Picken was a guilty party so Sydney FC perhaps a lifeline from the dead ball in the dying stages of this first half Calais is there Corica as well picked up at all by Newcastle and that is a reprieve for the Jets well defended there from Ante Milicic coming back knowing that he probably beaten in the air by Rudin but stuck to his task well, we're into time added on as Sydney FC have a corner too close to Lee already we we'll just want to settle things down and Dwight York is stripped and ready to come on. And again, you have to say, a strange time to make a substitution. Well, not really. If you're a coach and you're unhappy, it's just, he's making a statement, Lebarski, saying that he's not happy at all with that first half performance from the team, and especially Robbie Middleby. To make subs at this stage is a statement, Mike. Well, it's a big statement as well. And Newcastle have... A free kick deep inside their own half. And Dwight York comes on to replace Middleby. So not only is there a personnel change being made by Lebowski, a formation change as well. Off comes the jewellery and on comes Dwight York. Dwight York. 
Then you'll find Dwight York go in behind Petrovsky and Drillich. The four midfielders there will spread in behind him. Well, Sydney FC now have the 11 players on the field who started the first game against the Melbourne victory, which was claimed by some to have been some to be an experiment which failed. Well, it was an attacking lineup, and now it's an attacking lineup as well when you're down 2-0. They've got the three strikers on, they've got creative midfielders, and they need to make something happen very quickly. So York on for Sydney. So too Andy Packer. Two changes made by Pierre Lebarski in response to this scoreline. A look at the watch from referee Matthew Breeze. Down goes Milicic and the Jets with a chance. York over the ball. Carl has the free kick. Goes for goal. You have to say a waste. That free kick from Nicky Carl, but it hasn't been a wasteful evening so far for the Jets. Carl has been the creator. Milicic and Johnston have been the finishers. And Sydney FC with an awful amount of work to do. The halftime score here at Energy Australia Stadium. Newcastle Jets 2. Sydney FC 0. Plenty of hard work ahead of them. And Dwight York is on for the visitors. Is he going to deliver the goods? Checkerly. Drillich. The challenge from Zelich, who was an unsung hero, really, of this Newcastle side in the first half, Ned Zelich. Jade North getting plenty of room down the right as well. And Ned Zelich in a flat defence, proving a point. Certainly making David Zrilic's life a misery. Here they are tangling again. Zelic and Zrilic. Well, it's a big ask for Sydney FC, but they do have the players capable of turning things around. Newcastle will be well aware of that. At the moment, Sydney have... Ten players on the field who have played for their country at some level. It's a star-studded lineup for Sydney FC. But a team of stars is not always a star team. And Newcastle are doing all the right things. And here's a chance for Halidi to do something even better. Couldn't get on the end of a delightful ball in from the Uruguayan Mateo Corbo. Aliti given his start this evening ahead of Mark Bridge, who is on the bench for the Jets. Talley, outside of the boot, kicks out Packer in space. Plenty of targets in the middle for Andy Packer. York! Dwight York getting across the body of Alan Pickin and getting his head to the ball. He scored from a two position in the opening round of the season. And maybe Dwight York feels he has a point to prove as well. It's been a huge few weeks for Dwight York, both at club and international level. As he tries to not only help Sydney FC to a good start in the Hyundai A-League, but also, of course, Trinidad and Tobago to a first ever place in the World Cup. Richard Money pulled all the right strings with his team selection this evening. Challenge on Petrovsky. Fifth foul 
of the game from Alan Pickin. So he is to adjust something in his defending. Calais whips it in. Pickin wins the header. This time it's a clean challenge. Milicic has taken up good position wide on the left. Going through the middle was Thompson. Good ball from Milicic. But Bolton right out to the edge of his box to snuff out the danger. Over the top goes Calais. Onside is York. Dwight York. Well, that is a shot on target. He appeals to the referee, feeling his shirt was touched, perhaps, Dwight York. And the tempo has picked up from Sydney FC. Zelich and York. Does he have a case? I think he has a, a slight case there, Mike. You've seen that Zelich there with his left arm on Dwight York. Dwight York's shoulder. Just giving him a little bit of a tug before he could finish the goal. After this challenge from Ned Zelich, most of the game now being played in the Newcastle half of the field. And that tells its story as well. 69% possession in the second half for Sydney. Enormous amount of the ball. should have done better. Great ball in there from Calais. Mark Rudin making a deep run from the halfway line. Jade North well defended. Another corner for Sydney FC. Rudin again the target. Almost broke for York. He's checkling. will have to continue playing their game. They're using a lot of energy, sapping a lot of energy, chasing in the central midfield, but they've got to keep their outlet, keep their outlet right up front, give them a, a way of getting out of their own half. Well, Stevie Corica has just flown in on his opponent, and he has a look at the colour, and he doesn't like what he sees. It's all getting a bit ugly here at the Energy Australia Stadium. As the frustrations boil over. Cordoba was involved. The referee has made his decision. And it's a long, lonely walk to the dressing room for Steve Torica. the incident. Corica sent from the field, Sydney FC down to 10 men. Will Corbo be in trouble for running in and causing even more problems? And that's his as well. Corbo, a second yellow, so it's 10 apiece. And that is something which his coach Richard Money will be very, very unhappy about. It already been booked quarter bowl and a coach asking the question what were you doing very disappointing there from two experienced players Steve Corica especially Pierre Lebarski will be frustrated with that Steve Corica had two goes at young Mark Bridge first go he just missed but the second one he did collect him here we see it Mike See Steve Corica there lash out at him. Mark Bridge rides that one, but he gets up. You'll see Steve Corica coming here again from behind him with a high challenge and a nasty challenge. Steve Corica should know better than that. And the point there is, why did Matteo Corbo run 50 metres to get involved? 
Good point, That's Mike. the point that Richard Money is making to his player. So it's ten apiece. But the Jets still leading by those two goals scored early in the first half. And now Richard Money will make a change. And not surprisingly, a striker makes way for a defender. Steve Eagleton will probably fill that left fullback position. Haliti has been sacrificed in the reshuffle. One performance from young Lahiti. Haliti, sorry. Was instrumental in the in the movement up front. The really frustrated Sydney's defence, breaking them down, making good runs in behind. He's opted now to go for the Steve Eagleton at left back, and watch for him, Mike, breaking from deep. Time starting to run out for Sydney FC. They need to get a move on. They won't go very far with passes like that. Maybe the energy that Sydney have expended in first 20 minutes or so of this second half is starting to take its toll. Pierre Lebarski hasn't had a happy night. It's been a challenging night for the Sydney FC coach in every respect. Paul Kohler, Thompson again. Now with Jade North. Carl tries to go through the defender. Intelligent play this from Newcastle, keeping possession as Eagleton has his shirt pulled by Petrovsky. Paul for Petrovsky is already He's already been hooked at Petrovsky so he has to be careful <laughs> The official crowd today 8,591 and the vast majority of them will go home happy if this scoreline stays as it is Early cross from Chakalik York, York, and Dwight York has given Sydney a lifeline. Sydney back in the contest, and an unsmiling Dwight York has given him the opportunity. And there's the quality of Dwight York, the football in from Alvin Checkley, Sachin Petrovsky having an aerial duel there with Tickham and drops to Dwight York and a lovely finish. Well that is proving the point and Dwight York has done it with a lovely first touch and a cool finish. And Sydney FC are right back into this contest. Pierre 
Clarkie, Mike, has one more ace up his sleeve. Newcastle are dropping so deep, and Sydney are getting the ball out in the wider areas. I'd think about putting Mark Rudin up front. They only need one, uh, two guys at the back because Newcastle aren't playing with any front men. Long ball forward by Checkerley. Australia Stadium. Dwight York has dragged Sydney back into the match. Still more than 10 minutes left in the contest. Newcastle will be sick if they throw this one away. And the Sydney FC travelling fans have finally found their voice in a big, big way. They sense a comeback is on the card. They're halfway there, Sydney FC. Thanks for that superb goal from Dwight York. of this game. He didn't show a lot of emotion after this superb goal. The touch taken away from Kohler and Liam Reddy. No chance. The shot taken early. That is a good goal from a very, very good player.
through Carney. Willis heard the ball from York and the pass is misdirected. Cole up. Heads towards open space. The ball, Mark Rudin, is now pushed right up front. Yeah, Lebarski must have read my mind. Takes one to no one. We've seen that before, Mark Rudin finishing a game as a striker. Richard Murray, Richard Money, I should say, feeling the tension. He's been screaming at his players for most of the second half. I'm not sure if they're listening to him. Well, the look at that shot, they're not. The well, question mark now is who is going to mark Rudin? Did Jellich pick him up? And then someone else has to drop in and pick up Sasha Petrovsky. Eagle turn. Bridge. The shot. Driven in by Richie Johnson. Just on five minutes remaining. And a rare shot on goal from Newcastle in this second half. And Dwight York now dropping inside his own half of the pitch to receive the ball. That proves how keen he is to get things going with time fast running out. Sydney finishing over the top of Newcastle. Can the Jets hang on? Petrovsky. McFlynn. Chase for the shot, Terry McFlynn. And that one won't make the highlights real of the Northern Ireland Youth International. Once again, Newcastle dropping so deep, no one putting any pressure. On the ball, uh, Terry McFlynn being able to carry the ball a good 20, 25 metres before anyone attempted to put pressure on him. Carl Eagleton overlaps. Carl wants to return and gets it. And he splits at the worst possible moment. Nick Carl broken for Sydney. McFlynn, Trillich. Back up. Lumps it forward. Looking for Rudin. North wins it. North looking to accelerate into the gap, but the gap closed quickly. Carney. Built for handball. Referee may have been unsighted. All Sydney FC. They are battering this Newcastle defence, looking for the equaliser. Checkley given time. Rudin. And that will be a goal kick. Newcastle have been hanging on for grim death for most of this second half. And Richard Money now makes his final move. Stuart Newselling, a very promising young midfield player, comes on for a weary Matthew Thompson. And one of the reasons that Newcastle are probably defending so deep is they've just run out of petrol. Run out of petrol in midfield, chasing the ball down. There's no way you can keep up that type of work rate that Newcastle put in in the first 60 minutes, closing the ball down. But Matty Thompson had a fine game in there next to Richard Johnson. And Stewie Mushleyak, a young, highly potential young, 20, young, young soccer, sorry, coming on to replace him. Well, Bridge looking to draw the foul, doesn't get the decision. Mark Bridge and Stuart Mushleyak. 
members of the Australian under 20 team this year. And New Select stops over the last few minutes of this game will just be to run and run and run and run. put Mark Rudin up front to try and get in the middle of the goal to, for some crosses but he keeps hanging out wide on this left hand side he's got to move more central comes forward by Packer looking for Zrilic and Rudin's got the better of Zelic and look to have been obstructed and that is the view of the referee so more work to do for Newcastle in the dying stages are looking to hang on to the three points they haven't won a game so far this season a win here will do wonders for their confidence they haven't got it yet Carney this Newcastle penalty area. Chance for Newcastle to break. Look at the room here for Mark Rich. You select in fact. You select in space. And he had his pocket pick. Mark Rich. And York now for Sydney. to the wall for the they are out on their feet here's Selig and another free kick for Sydney and more pressure for the Jets as here Selig goes into the book for that challenge Stadium desperate for the final whistle. And Alan Pickens happy to get that one up towards the halfway line. So running on empty Newcastle. Zelix with the up and under. forward straight into the arms of Liam Reddy Sydney FC. That desperation shown by Checkerly. And Sydney have another free kick. Packer. That is cleared the head of Petrovsky and Reddy will take his time. Sydney FC threw everything at the 
Jets. They couldn't find a breakthrough in the dying stages. It's Newcastle Jets 2, Sydney FC 1. A first half which belonged to Newcastle, a second half which belongs to Sydney FC. Congratulations to Richard Money. Dwight York came off the bench to great effect. It was his goal which gave Sydney FC the lifeline. But the Newcastle Jets hung on grimly. Led Dulwich marshalling that Jets defence. The goal for Newcastle came from Ante Milicic and Richie Johnson. And the light here at the Energy Australia Stadium for the fans. Most of them who will go home delighted that the Jets have got themselves off the mark. Smile from Milicic. A shake of the hand from his best mate, Mark Rudin. It's been a difficult night for both teams, but Sydney FC pulled all the strings they could. Pierre Lipaski changed everything around at half time. It almost paid off, but not quite. And no wonder the Newcastle players milked the applause from the fans. They'll be back if they get more of this, that's for sure. Newcastle Jets off the bottom of the table, hot on the heels of Sydney FC. A huge morale booster for Newcastle. Some food for thought for Sydney FC, who came and saw but didn't conquer. And there was courage aplenty from Newcastle. Ned Dulwich with the final score, Newcastle 2, Sydney FC 1. Thanks for joining us here at the Energy Australia Stadium. The Newcastle Jets are investigating avenues of appeal after Uruguayan Mateo Corbo was sent off in last night's 2-1 win against Sydney FC. Both sides finished with 10 men in a drama-charged match that had just about everything, but most importantly for Newcastle, ended with their first win. <laughs> Winners are grinners and the Jets gave themselves away today. It was excellent, it was unreal. Um, hopefully we can keep that going now, that's just a start. Just winning makes it all worthwhile, you know, it's just, um, it gets everybody on a high. You could tell by the way things started, you had to expect anything. The real surprise for Sydney came only a few minutes later when Ante Milicic and Nick Carl worked a 1-2 to a T. Returning home, Robbie Middleby was hardly given a welcome return. While Richard Johnson continues to revel after his years away from Newcastle. Chase for Johnson! Richie Johnson! Matteo Cordobo's running battle with Middleby was getting nasty. Yellow carded, his name wasn't the only one appearing in the referee's black book. In the second half, Steve Corsica saw red for his ugly challenge on Mark Bridge. When Cordobo lost his cool, the Jets were a man down as well. The Uruguayan defender may not speak much English, but you can bet he heard every word coach Richard Money had to say. In a further twist, Dwight York came off the bench to score for Sydney and set up a frantic finish. But this was Newcastle's night. 
we can't become complacent now. We've got to take it on, and um, this is where it should take off for us, you know. The New Zealand Knights hit town today ahead of Sunday's A-League match against the Newcastle Jets. Although the home side is still to settle on its starting 11, star striker Ante Milicic will play despite a broken bone in his hand. It's the sort of thing you'd rather not draw attention to, but the strapping on Ante Milicic's hand is hard to ignore. Opting against surgery, the striker will instead wear a protective guard so he can continue playing as the fracture around a knuckle heals over the next four to six weeks. It's something of a fibreglass nature because I've got to watch if the ball hits it or if I fall on it. So hopefully that'll be approved you know, by the referees before kickoff and I'm, and I'm right to go. Used to being targeted, the Kiwis are sure to zero in on Sunday. With Matteo Corbo suspended, it opens the door for Stu Mishalik to start while Steve Eagleton is also in the frame. Young English striker Guy Bates also comes into the squad for the first time in an A-League match after impressing during a trial match midweek. I'm the first one to admit that I haven't really been up to scratch, so for the manager to say, right, there's your chance, hopefully I'll take it. After the win against Sydney FC last weekend, the coach has high expectations for his side as they continue efforts to win over local fans, not just the opposition. I think they proved last weekend that, um, you know, Dwight York and Sydney are not going to bring them to the stadium. It's our players, you know, and it's the way that we perform. Sunday's match kicks off at five o'clock. Jim Callanan. NBN News. Newcastle, the Jets had their goal scoring touch early when Labanot Halidi followed up a slip up from Danny Milosevic. Strike at the energy of The second goal won't be added to the Milosevic highlight reel after he misread a shot from Nick Carl and Matt Thompson pounced. Has got it terribly, terribly wrong. But there was little he could do about the third as the Jets look to have wrapped the game Jackson up at half time. And gets its reward. Stuart Newselec. Steve Taylor, SBS Sport.